All right, guys, here we are in 2022. A lot of exciting things happening. Uh, Caleb and I are out in the field, and we are we're playing a little kickball right now. And Caleb, you want to say hi to everybody? Hi. What are we doing, buddy? What are well, we? I'm tackling Daddy. <laughs> You're tackling me? Okay, here. All right, so while Caleb is tackling me, I will share with you um, we have a lot of exciting things coming up this year. One of them, which I'm talking to you on right now, we have a complete new video series coming up that's going to be talking about or uh, breaking down things, uh, ticks of the tips of the trade of content creation. Uh, everything from the gear used, uh, tips, tricks, and all that other fun stuff. But one of them I wanted to, Yeah, give me one second, buddy. But one of the items that I wanted to break down here is last year we kept getting quite a handful of requests from you guys on inexpensive uh, cameras, specifically the, well, one of the big ones is the Sony ZV-1, which of course I am talking on right now. <laughs> ah, that's gonna hurt my head, buddy. Okay, well, you guys are gonna come along for the ride for this. Okay, it is the Sony ZV-1. So you can pick this camera up from uh, Adorama for 645 bucks. And we kept getting a, quite a handful of questions from folks whether or not this makes a good camera for getting started in content creation. And out of the box, this camera... Best friends is, out of the box. Is best friends out of the box. That's What movie is that from? Ron's gone wrong. <laughs> anyway, so out of the box, this camera has a lot of hope, but is it perfect? No, there's actually four things that, and that's what we're going to cover in today's video, incidentally. There are four things that I would change that make this from a, it's an okay camera to an absolute rock star. Uh, and fortunately, two of them, two of the items that you can do with this uh, are right from within the menus of the camera itself. And the other two require a little mild, uh, don't choke me, buddy. I require a small little investment. Let's see if I can get myself back lit here. Now, before we get diving with this, I have a big favor to ask you guys. As always, we put these videos together to help you guys stay informed or make educated decisions. In this particular case, it's all about 2022 and getting you off to a great start. Now, if we're successful with this, if you could do me a big favor and hit that like button down below, it really does help with the whole YouTube algorithm. That said, my friends, pull up a seat in. Let's go. Normally, I do that let's go thing, but with him on my shoulders, it's a little difficult, so play along. So there's four things we're going to be talking about in this camera to make this an absolute rock star. We're going to be talking about the ND filter. Now this thing has one built into it. Uh, we're going to be talking about a very annoying uh, timer that this thing has from Sony out of the box, which is set to five minutes. Um, and then we're going to be talking about putting this or converting this into a wider uh, field of view that with this. And then of course, last but not least, you can't have video without good strong audio. So while this has a pretty decent built-in mic system on it you want to get off no you can't okay. have a video without poo no <laughs> you can't have it have an incoming phone call <sighs> all right well between uh that call and then my son out there well finishing up this video out there just simply didn't happen so i figured you know what i would wait until i can get in front of the or back to my studio here and we'll finish up that video which we'll do right now so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to break this down to We'll do the two items that require a little investment up front, and then we'll do the two items that are adjustable from within the camera last. And so we're going to start off with off the get-go. So the ZV-1, the Sony ZV-1 comes to or comes to you with a 2870. Now this is a fixed lens; you cannot change it. The only way that you can make adjustments to it is getting one of these adapters, and this is. This one is actually made by Ulanzi. It's the WL1. And so out of the box, this is a 28 to 70 millimeter lens that's on this thing. And when you're in front, actually we'll do a, actually I think I have a video card in here. I hope I do. Let's see, do I have a video card in here? I do have a video card. Okay, so as you can see right here, I'm now recording. So this is, with this adapter off the camera right now. Uh, and as you can see, the frame around me is pretty tight. Now, if I, let's see if I can do this well. 
without screwing things up here. I'm gonna screw this bugger back on. So doing this, so now you can see there's a lot more negative space around me, makes it a much more comfortable frame. If you're doing kind of a vlogging style, uh, you know, content creation here. So there's a lot more space. You don't feel so kind of cramped in the, in the frame. Uh, and the best part about it here is this adapter. So let's, let me show you this here. Oops. So this adapter here is 50 bucks and it feels, it has quite a bit of weight. And so the fun part with it is when you get it, the installation of this is actually really easy. Uh, I picked this off of Amazon, it arrived pretty fast and Yulanzi sends this out. So you have a few added, so you have four, they send it out with five of these little sticker things here that you, I'm guessing, at one point this is probably gonna fall off. And you put the sticker, on the, the 3M tape, on the back of this piece right here, which has the threads, which of course this will screw in on here. And it, it sits on there pretty well, and that's it. So for 50 bucks, converting this from a 24, I'm sorry, to a 2470 uh, to a solid 18 millimeter when you're up front, that makes a huge difference. And that's of course going to be my number one, uh, you no. Know, it's a tie between this and then we're gonna talk about audio next. All right, the next thing we're gonna to talk to that is converting the Sony ZV-1 into more of a player, more of a, what I would call a legitimate, and I hate using that term because it's a good camera out of the box, but these are things that are gonna refine it and gonna make it better. And where I'm leaning with this here is if you're creating content, yeah, most cameras, including this one, will shoot in 4K, which is a great, it's a great file. It's a great video quality uh, to put in front of folks. And if the audio is tangy and just feels shallow and hollow, that's not gonna be good. So out of the box, this has pretty okay sound. I mean, considering what it is, I mean, the mic is mounted right up here. And guys, I have the dead cat on there right now. So as you can see here, the mic is right up on the top. Uh, and you have this dead cat that slides in utilizing the hot shoe on the top, if I can get it in there. And in all reality, it doesn't sound bad, but there are things that you can do to make this sound better. And that's where we're gonna come in. We're gonna talk about mics here a little bit. And it's funny because I just did a video on this particular mic, which is brand new, which actually works out good that this video is going out later than I wanted because if it went out earlier, I couldn't talk about this particular mic, but Rode just announced it this week. So I can make the recommendations and heavy recommendations for this mic for that matter. So typically when I go out, I will go out with, I'm using the video mic uh, NTG, which is, this is a badass mic, but it's also 200, it's either 249 or $299 for this. Uh, it's made by Rode. Uh, it has all sorts of functionalities and this is, I would have to say my, my number one mic that I use right now, although, this little guy is becoming a favorite for me here, and I'll share with you why here in a moment. But I'm guessing you want to, I'm gonna address the better price and we'll work our way up. Now I'm gonna recommend, if you're on a budget, one of these two are going to be an absolute rock star. Although I'm gonna recommend this one though, even though this one is, this one right here is double the cost of this one. This is the Rode Video Micro, and as you can see here, it is small. And we'll do a comparison here. Let me. Plop this on here and plug yay in. So you'll be able to hear what the stock audio sounds like on this. Okay, and now, okay. All right, we have the video micro on top of the Sony ZV-1, so you're able to get a sense of what the audio sounds like utilizing something like the Rode Video Micro. Okay, now we're going to swap that sucker out and we're gonna put on, we're gonna put on the Video Mic Go 2. So this is Rode's brand new follow-up to their very popular Video Mic Go. And all right, here we go. This is a audio test with the video, or with the, excuse me, with the Rode Video Mic Go 2. 
2 on the Sony ZV-1. Again, you're able to get a sense of what this mic, which is a, oops, grab the dead cat to that one. Uh, this one is $100. This mic right here is $50. So you can get a sense of what that additional $50 is getting you from a depth standpoint with the sound and so forth. All right, then we're going to swap out and put the video mic NTG on here. This is, I absolutely love this mic, but again, if you're starting out on a budget, honestly, you don't need to spend the money on, on this. As you're gonna find out here in a moment, the video mic uh, go to sounds pretty damn good and it is considerably less than this one right here. All right, plug this in. And boom, if I could get that there. Okay. Audio test with the Sony ZV-1, and right now we have the Rode uh, Video Mic NTG on here. So now you can get a sense of what this sounds like. Now this mic again is a little bit, this is the most expensive out of all three of the mics that I'm sharing with you right now. This one is $249 or $299. But look at it as a, a mic as a, just as equally important as the video quality itself. Good audio really goes a long way. So between those three mics, I would make recommendations to one of those. And either one, either one of those is going to transform your Sony ZV-1 from kind of a shallow sounding audio to something with much more depth. And of course your audience is gonna be much more appreciative of that investment that you made. All right, so if you have a Sony ZV-1 and you've taken this thing out of the box and you're excited, you get out there, start shooting with it, you might be surprised that this thing's gonna shut off after five minutes of shooting, if you're shooting in 4K. And it's funny because I picked up, well, it's not funny because I had no idea this timer was in this thing and I was out, I was shooting and, and wondering why this thing kept shooting or shutting off. It wasn't until I got home and actually did a little research and was found that there's a setting inside of here called auto power off temp and it's set to standard. So Sony, uh, by default, sends these things out and it has a five minute timer. Then it will shut the, the recording off to keep this thing from overheating. Now, to get to this part, so to, to fix this here, so first we're gonna get to the menu. So I'll start from square one here. We click on the menu button. We're gonna come to, if you're not on the yellow tab already for the tool case, just hit the little FN button. Come over to the toolbox and we're gonna go to page number two. We're gonna go down to auto power off temp. And as you can see, it's set to standard right now. We are going to click into this. We're gonna move it to high. Now it's gonna give us a warning. The temperature of the device may rise to prioritize recording time. Would you like to change this setting? Yes. Okay, so one thing I do wanna make clear here. So I actually did a test, which after I'm done jibber jabbering here, I'll actually show you the test. So they're talking about this thing could get hot and I've watched some people talking about, you know, it gets super burning hot, which the test that I did, uh, the temperature inside my studio was 73 degrees. And I ran this thing in the setting 4K30 and it lasted to, I think it's 54 minutes. And I had a infrared heat gun and the hottest this thing got, which incidentally is right in this corner, in this very corner right here, I think it was 127 degrees that it got. And as you go this way, it got considerably cooler. I seem to remember at the end of the test, uh, when the, uh, actually it was the battery that filled up. Anyways, the, the battery, died in this, which I was actually surprised. 54 minutes on a single battery was is actually pretty good. But right towards the bottom corner here, it was like 84 degrees, but again, up here, it was 129. But again, right in that little corner right there is where it was super hot. So anyways, back towards this, we're gonna hit the okay button and we are good to go. And now you won't, the camera's not gonna shut off every five minutes when you're shooting. So I'm gonna share with you the test that I ran now. Uh, again, it was 73 degrees in my studio, uh, 4K 30. Um, again, I did this test mainly because a lot of people were saying that this thing could get you know stifling hot, you can barely handle the camera. Uh, it, in one little corner, it got 127 degrees and that was after 54 minutes of running. Now, if it's 100 degrees out, yeah, it's probably gonna get a little toasty, but for my shooting, 
I, you know, most of the clips that I shoot with this thing are barely 10 to 15 minutes long to begin with here. So anyways, your discretion. Okay, just starting off, 4K 30, about a minute into this, 79 degrees. Okay, so we're about 23 minutes now. It looks like the top right is the warmest of this thing, about 118 degrees versus in the middle here down to 96. So all the magic is happening in the top right of this thing. Okay, we're coming on 35 minutes. Hottest point seems to be in the top right corner where it uh, looks like Twenty-two looks like the hottest point. One twenty. Okay, get up in there. The center drops down quite a bit, and obviously, the left hand side really cools down quite a bit. Okay, we're coming on to 50 minutes. Let's see. It's all the red dot. We can see where the hot spots are in this thing. So, I guess where I saw 125 a minute ago. Let's try. All right, so we can see here, actually right around the 52 and a half mark uh, is when the Sony decided to shut off there, uh, which is actually pretty good. Now, full disclosure though, with most of the shooting that I use with, or I shoot with this camera right here, it's usually between five, maybe 15, 20 minutes max. So I wasn't sure how long uh, this was going to shoot uh, with that setting changed on it. So I'm actually surprised 52 minutes isn't shabby. Now, again, the ambient temperature is about 73 degrees in here right now. So, you know, obviously if it's warmer, uh, that's going to have an impact on the temperature of this thing. And when the, the sensors inside of this thing decide to call it quits uh, as a result of uh, overheating. But 52 minutes, 73, 74 degrees, that's pretty good. All right, the final thing that I'm gonna share with you here is now that you have the Sony ZV-1 is let's getting the controls that you need at your fingertips. And one of the things that I really admire about this camera is that it has a built-in ND filter. But getting access to that, you have to go stumbling through your menu button to go getting into that. But you can customize the buttons here, and that's what I'm gonna show you how to do. So we're gonna hit the menu button here and I'm already on that section here. So you wanna be on the number two folder, which is the purple. You're gonna to go to, oops, I was just there. We're gonna scroll on over to, oops, page number eight. And you'll see you have the ability to set up custom buttons based upon if you're shooting stills, video, and then of course the playback. The second one down here, we're gonna click on uh, the video tab for customization. You're gonna see how I have this set up. So you can go into each one of these. You can see I have, uh, the top button, or it should be down here, the, the trash button for audio record level. And the one that's most important to me is when I'm shooting, I'm able to click the center button right here for the to activate the ND filter, which I'll show you how that works here in a moment. And then of course, frame rate is off to the side there. Okay, to set up one of the custom buttons, it's actually straightforward. You go down to the button that you want to change, hit the center button, and you're gonna have pages of pages with all sorts of different options that you can put into there. And there's our ND filter right there. So let's just put face priority and multi 
metering, boom. So now that's our number four. So when at the end of the day, I am able to hit the right side of the button and that's gonna turn on face priority. All right, let me show you how convenient this is now. So I'm out, imagine for a moment, I'm out shooting in the sun. There's a lot of dynamic range. All I have to do now is press that center button and I have the ability to turn on and off my ND filter over on the left-hand side, which is fantastic. All right, guys, there you go. This was a fun video to put together. And at the end of the day, to sum it up, you're talking about a total investment of 750 50-ish dollars or so. And that is factoring in the camera, which is $649 with uh, Adorama. You have the Ulanzi WL1, which is the lens adapter on there. And let's say you go with the, the budget-friendly uh, mic option, which is the Rode Video Micro, uh, 50 bucks, 50 bucks, uh, 750. So considering what this camera can do and then making the other adjustments that we discussed already with this thing here, man, this thing is a rock star out of the box. Guys, I hope this video is helpful for you. And actually doing so, it's that time of the video where I'm gonna ask you to do all that YouTube stuff that is oh so valuable to the channel. So if you found some value at this video, if you could do me a favor, hit that like button down below. If you're currently not subscribed to the channel, friend, what are you waiting for? We have all sorts of fun here. We would love to have you part of this family. And last but not least, hey, you've gone this far, you might as well kick smash, do something with that bell sliver, you're notified every time that we come out with a new video. Friends, I'm gonna be jumping out of my studio here, so you get out there, stay healthy, and find your best shot.